Welcome back to another Zwift Recon. This one is for the Innsbruck Ring for a scratch race. Just three laps for this one and no intermediate segment. So it's just a race to the finish line for those finish line points. Today, we're gonna to look at some possible tactics for teams and also some potential danger points to watch out for those moves and those splits in the group. Let's dive in to this week's Recon. Okay, thanks for joining again as we approach the end of the Zwift Racing League for another season. But of course, plenty to look forward to as we head towards the Zwift Games, which will be starting soon after the Zwift Racing League. But for today, it's all about Innsbruck Ring, which has a few points to watch out for. And even though the leg snapper is not a segment for the points, it is still absolutely the place where separation and breaks can be formed. Before we get on course and take a look, let's look at the recon notes which are done and available over on levelvelo.cc community pages as always. Talking of Level Velo, you remember we launched the Design a Jersey competition. We have had around 10 entries at this stage and some absolutely beautiful design concepts. You still have time to submit your design idea to us for your chance to have that jersey made into a real life jersey, courtesy of course of Level Velo Clothing. I also want to take this opportunity to highlight an amazing member of this Zwift and a very special and tenacious challenge which he is undertaking. I was lucky enough to meet up with our Zwift community member John Walkley for a coffee recently and he told me about a ride he is taking on to raise money for the CICRA charity which is for Crohn's in Childhood Research Association, a topic which is close to John's heart given that his son Edison has Crohn's, which is a lifelong illness. I've left links for more information down below. But on the 17th of February, John is going to be attempting to ride 4,000 kilometers in just seven days back to back, starting each day at around 4 to 5 a.m. in the morning and ride until either he's reached 700 kilometers per day or midnight, whichever comes first. Firstly, I have agreed to do some riding alongside John throughout this epic challenge, and I'm sure some of you would like to support John and the charity also. I have again put links down below if you want to ride with John to help him battle through those hours. I know he would welcome the company and the community support. There's a link to John Swift and his YouTube accounts down below in the description. Go and give those ride-ons, go and ride alongside John and give your support. Thank you for taking the time and your support. Now, let's get going with this recon. Power-ups, the feather, the ghost for invisibility and the aero power-up. All could be super useful on this course for a scratch race. And again, using those power-ups to continue moves or breaks could be useful in a few places on this route. And the aero for the finishing sprint would be the one to hold on to if you're in a good size group on that final lap, which is lap three. Plenty of opportunities to pick up power-ups. Also, first at the start-finish banner, then again at the top of the leg snapper, and then at the sprint banner, which is just a little further down the road from the snapper. I personally think using the power-up on the leg snapper and then using whatever you get at the top and hitting the descent hard and then again through the sprint banner is where the brakes will come. I don't see any moves going before the leg snapper having any real impact given the pack speed that could benefit rolling into the bottom of the leg snapper. By choice, I would go full aero again for this one. It's only really the leg snapper where the climbing rig is useful. And to be honest, it's super short. And again, the entry speed into that part of the course is likely to have an impact. All right, as mentioned, the recon notes are done. So let's get on course and take a look in a bit more detail. Yes, I know this footage is from a points race, but honestly, I think the attack points are going to be the same for the scratch race. Maybe what we're going to see is more attacks over the top of the snapper to maintain those splits, which inevitably will come specifically probably on lap two and lap three. Okay, as mentioned, that's three laps, so that's 26.5 kilometers for all categories. We're gonna leave the pens, we're gonna take a left, and we're gonna head towards that start finish banner. So indeed, picking up one of those power-ups early doors in this race. 
We then have a long section through the outer ring road of Innsbruck before heading towards the city and then towards the first time up the leg snapper sprint slash climb. Now, at kilometer 4.3, you're gonna notice the road surface changes to these bricks. First, they are gray, and then they eventually turn orange color. You know you're getting close to the leg snapper once you're on this brick paved section. This is the point where you want to position yourself towards the front for that punch up the climb. We zigzag over the river before we're taking that right turn onto the climb proper. Watch for those moves and potential splits in the group. The chances are you're gonna see attacks every single lap to try and reduce that group size. If you're the one on the offensive as it's a scratch race, I think you need to be continuing the effort over the top to try and ensure any smaller groups of riders don't come back to you on the descent. So yes, you descend over the other side, use that power up as shortly you will hit the sprint banner at kilometer seven and collect another power up. This is the section again to continue with the pressure if you're looking to break down that group. Pay attention on this course to the group sizes around you and the time gaps if possible so you can make choices on when you need to push on or ease off to maintain gaps, close gaps or potentially sit up if you're solo and you see a large group closing in on you. So once we cross the river again, it's back on those flat roads, back towards the start finish banner where again, you'll get another power up. The banner on lap one is gonna come at kilometer nine. It's then rinse and repeat again for lap two and three. I'm going to jump ahead in this race footage to look at this finishing sprint. It's a long straight sprint. The finish banner is really visible. Again, some riders may choose to go early there. And again, at the end of this video, the whole lap will be played through once again. As you can see from the finish, we had one rider up the road who we caught in the final sprint. But once again, I got rolled on the finish line by Simon Butner from Jurosport. Which I didn't feel too bad about as Level Velo do make the team kit for Jurosport. So that was kind of okay. Not that I held back at all. I'm still giving it everything, but he still beat me. And in fact, I've still not beaten Simon yet. Anyway, that's the course. Don't forget those recon notes. Go and take a look at those. Don't forget to go and check out John Walkley, the community member doing this epic charity ride. And I'll see you next week for the final points race of the season in Neokyo. Have a great week's training and I'll see you soon for more cycling, esports content.